Hey, what's up? I'm Greg the Engineer. I'm going to talk about the big headline everybody's talking about right now. That's the uh, Pro Tools update 2023.12. The headline being is that the Adobe Atmos renderer is now integrated directly in the Pro Tools, meaning that you no longer need to have an external renderer to conduct an Atmos production. Now, spoiler alert uh, for those of you, including myself, that are currently in an external renderer workflow, this isn't going to really alleviate you from that. Um, while it's nice to see this as a step in the right direction, unifying the software, it's not quite there. We're missing some robust features that we get on the external renderer and some perks. Um, with that being said, you could still update because the new update uh, supports the external renderer and the internal renderer. And in this video, I'll show you how you could toggle between the two different settings. For those of you who are new to Atmos, this is it. This is your chance. This is a great entry level way of getting into it to understand it because you could start with a set of headphones and a small interface. You don't need like a wide array of speakers. Uh, Avid kind of streamlined this and made it very easy to uh, monitor the binaural re-renders uh, with very little configuration. Uh, let's check it out. Let's take a look at it. All right, so you just installed or you're thinking about installing the latest Pro Tools update, which is 2023.12. Um, the big perk or the big deal here is the integrated renderer. For those of you that have not been working in Atmos, this is a really great start and they really kind of unified and streamlined everything for you so you can easily get into this. For those of us that are working in the external renderer, this is great to see because it's something that we want, but it's, it's definitely not ready there. We're missing a lot of functionality. I'll go through that briefly to show you what's not quite there yet. And for those of us that are new to it, let's get started. So when you fire up the uh, Pro Tools after you've done the update, uh, there's a getting or a welcome dashboard. And on the welcome dashboard, there's getting started. And they gave us a Adobe Atmos demo session file. So why not check that out? While that loads, um, there's a couple things uh, that you're going to have to do to your I.O. just to get sound pumping into your headphones. And I'll cover that. And a couple things that I got to do just to record this video. Um, before I do that, it may load with the renderer popped up, and we'll totally talk about that in just a second. If it doesn't pop up and you, you're going to take a look at it, uh, it's command control equals. Brings it up, brings it down. Alternatively, it's under the window menu, and uh, da -da -da -da, right there, Adobe Atmos renderer. For now, we're going to go into the I.O., which is interesting because we have access to the I.O. right here. Uh, but we're going to go over the renderer in full detail in just a moment. Um, for now, let's set up our I.O. so we can get sound into our headphones. Uh, go to Setup, I.O., and we're going to focus on the Output tab. Now, your Output tab may have some lingering setups from your previous mix or project. Um, that's fine. What I'd suggest you do is uh, maybe start over, or you can leave your primary playback, your, your primary monitoring system in place, and I'll do exactly that. I'll delete these two paths here. And we'll just start over. So first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set up a stereo channel for our headphones. So new path, stereo. And I'm just going to call it HP for headphones. Hit create. And now this is something you can ignore. I just need to do a little what's called like an aux IO so that I can record the video. Although this is definitely not pertinent, pertinent to you guys. I'm just going to call this a PT out. Just so I can grab the audio for this, I'm gonna drag these guys here. Now, as far as your headphones go, when you create your headphone output, uh, just drag it over to an available output on your I/O or however your headphones are assigned. Um, this may diff this is gonna be different for everybody. Uh, maybe you only have two outputs, and those are typically set to your speakers. Where, if that's the case, like if you have like one of those like Focusrite Scarlet Twos or something, just uncheck the speakers, disable them. And then drag your headphones over to that one and two like this and then the audio will pop up out of your headphones for me it's kind of funky and i got something like this going on and then hit okay uh if you get an error when you try to hit okay it says uh, there's no default monitoring path set up that's just here you just going to select your primary speakers if you only have headphones then go ahead and select the headphones that you just created hit okay and what's interesting here is um what what was always tricky in the external renderer was to do what's called like listen to a live re-render and because we're working with all these channels and very complex immersive audio mix we want to also listen to the what's called the binaural uh, re-render which is 
all the channels, all the audio, all the object, all the immersive stuff just kind of pushed down into two uh, channels that you can listen to on headphones. Um, what's nice here is they did streamline this. So in this template or demo session, you can see here that they have this headphone aux channel and they assigned it to a dummy bus because they don't really know how every each person is going to be configured. Well, we just went over how that was configured. So we're going to change it from that dead end dummy bus to the output that we just created for our headphones, which is output. And then for the purpose of this video, I'm going to send to my recorder so that you guys can hear some audio from here. And I'm going to bop over into the uh, edit window and just hit play at some random spot just to see that, yes, we are getting sound. And yes, we are. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to check to make sure I'm getting that in my recorder. And I am perfect. Okay. So now, all right, what is this all about? Let's pull up that renderer. This is the Adobe renderer for those of you who are not familiar with it. Um, this is the engine that takes all of the audio panning information, immersive information and processes it and will render out your deliverables. So let's go over it. In the top left corner, they have a monitoring configuration. Everybody's monitoring configuration is going to be different. In this one, the preset configurations are limited and you can't customize it, but I'm going to go over all the differences between the external renderer in a second. Here we have, like I said before, a quick access to the IO, which is very convenient. And then we have our trim and down mix settings, which is for uh, folding audio down. Uh, I'll give the real popular examples. Like if you're working on film and you have like a scene maybe where there's like a helicopter, a bunch of gunfire in the background, but also dialogue up on the front, left, right, center speakers. If you're folding that down into a stereo mix, um, you don't want all that noise and effects to cover up the dialogue and just step all over it. So that's what these trim down functions are for. Similar for like audio stuff. If you like, I like to put like synths and shakers and stuff like that up high in the ceilings or in the back speakers. And I don't want it to be a prominent feature in my two channel mix. So I'll use that trim down to kind of pull those stuff back. But there are other ways to manage that too. Here we have mute uh, beds and objects muting. And then to the right of that, we have a graphical depiction of the speaker layout. So if I change the uh, monitoring the two channel, you see this boop drops down the two channels, put it back to 714. And likewise, the metering down below changes. Over here on the uh, left hand side, we have the objects and beds. The top orange strip rep, uh, represents what's called the beds, which is kind of like, think of it, it's kind of like a mix bus a little bit. I don't want to get in trouble for saying that, but some people treat it like a mix bus. They typically park things on to the bed that aren't they're not going to automate or will consider to be foundational to the project. And objects are usually things that you're going to automate and fly around and are more of an auxiliary in nature or featured as like a like a wow factor or you know or something uh, something that's a little nuts. Uh, I'll hit play here, and what we're going to see is when I hit play, you'll see uh, the audio where it is in the audio scape being graphically depicted on this little 3D render here. And let's just play a little snippet and take a peek and see what's happening. All right, cool. So what we see there are the audio objects moving around, like I said, being depicted graphically on that box. We could show some additional information. We could show what's called like the object ID. So for example, if I go over to the uh, mix window and I'll just grab, let's see, did we get, yeah, so this guy here, the deep U track is uh, assigned to object 13 and 14. So if I solo that up and I hit play, we could see 13 and 14 right up here in the front. And now we could see them being automated towards the back. If I pull up the panner, we could see the panning that's happening to the track. I'm gonna play that again. So you'll see that this panning, the Pro Tool surround panner is being graphically depicted here. And you'll notice something weird too, right? So like you'll notice that because you're listening on headphones as it goes from the front to the back, it doesn't just simply disappear. And that's kind of the whole point of the re-render. You know, it's it's the, the renderer's job is to interpolate how to get these larger formats down into smaller formats so that it's more uh, universal and agnostic to the speaker configuration. So with that being said, I mean, like, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you can start 
monkeying around in this session, play with the panners. I, I would suggest that you inspect the automation and see, observe like the behavior of how each track is interacting with the, uh, with the renderer. Now, for those of you who are working on the external renderer and you're wondering, why would I do this? Is it worth doing this internal thing? I'm going to say no. Uh, if you are working on the external renderer and you update it and it's firing up to the internal renderer and you're stuck and going, what the heck, how do I get back? Well, here's what's up. Uh, it's in the IO and under Adobe Atmos where it says internal renderer, you could switch that back to external render renderer and you'll be back to your old buddy here, which is great. So some of the things that aren't quite there yet for me are, uh, let's start with the monitoring path. Uh, in the external render, we can configure this. We could customize this to literally whatever we want. So you can see here, I have a couple custom ones. Um, and the internal or integrated renderer, we're kind of stuck with the ones that they've selected that they thought would be the most popular. Um, it's not a deal breaker. It's fine, especially for those, you know, starting off. But for me, it's like, well, I like to bounce around with configurations and the studio's got tons of things going on and I can't always have 714. I got to pull a couple channels. So I like to do 712 temporarily until I wrap up, then I'll patch in the other two. Um, another, another weird thing is that you can't change. All right. Is the way you change, the way you handle the binaural settings Previously, with the external render, you would use a plugin, in uh, and you would define those uh, those settings on the plugin. And if you looked in the renderer, it would the renderer would say where was that? Um, input configuration. The renderer would say that it was being controlled by Pro Tools. Now, this is built in and integrated into the um, integrated renderer, but there's a there's a caveat. We used to be able to take the plug and hit play and like listen and change it and then hear the changes like instantly. Um, so, you know, we, we could take a feature and then like test it as near, mid, far, or off, and then kind of like have a direct comparison. What sucks about this is you hit play and well, here's the thing. It's now, it's, in, it's embedded in the IO setup. But the problem with this is like if I hit play, I can't, as soon as I reach for that IO menu, it's gonna stop playback, check it out. IO, boom, playback, stop. So then if I switch something, I'd have to hit OK, start playback again, and then, you know, let's face it, you're not really going to be able to make that direct comparison that you did before. The other thing that I used to do, or I still do, because I'm still going to continue working in the external render, is like this is a really cool cheat that maybe not many of you know about. If you fire up Apple Music and you use something like Loopback Audio, you can map, like, Apple Music published Atmos mixes to Loopback Audio, right and you use something like this and then you can route the apple music player into the actual external renderer therefore you can then um solo out channels and study the mix so like you can command shift like oh i want to hear what this guy or girl did with just the lfe channel so you, uh yeah command click and it would solo out the f the lfe and it, it, it's even cooler because you're like oh i want to hear the side so you can command click then command shift click and just just listen to the sides or what's really cool is like just listening to the center like cause sometimes uh you know you can just listen to I, I there's a whitney houston track i forget which one it is but like you pound that button and while you're listening like that all you hear is the raw whitney track and it's amazing this one on the internal one internal renderer where'd you go internal renderer Let me pull this guy up no such feature exists i've tried you know i can't I just can't do it like there's can't solo out or mute those channels. Um, another thing is too that I, I like to use base management. Sometimes base management is a feature that's in the external renderer that will allow you to take a crossover frequency and ded dedicate it to the LFE channel. What does that mean? Well, unless you're mixing into the LFE channel, which is the subwoofer, you're not going to get any sub. Um, but if your room kind of needs a little boost in the low end, or if you're like me, I just like it excessive at times. I'll use what's called the base management and that's found on the external one. If you go to preferences, uh, yeah, see speaker base management frequency. So 50 Hertz and I cross it over. So meaning that even if there wasn't anything assigned or being mixed into the LFE channel, if it crossed below 50 Hertz, it would automatically throw it into the LFE channel. And that didn't mean that you couldn't mix into the LFE channel. You could do that in addition to mixing into the LFE channel. So that's a feature that I can't really, I'm not really willing to part with. Um, what else, man? Uh, yeah. So 
I don't know if I mentioned this before. So there's no more music panner. Music panner is gone. Um, I guess we'll, I'm just going to be recapping. So no music panner, no custom monitoring. Uh, you can't um, solo or solo or solo a combination of speakers to observe a mix. No bass management, and you can't change the binaural settings while you're in playback. In short, if you're just starting. You don't really need all of this stuff, like, because you're just working with headphones. A lot of this, um, you know, isn't really going to affect you. But for those of us working in the external renderer, you know, there are a few setbacks. Among those setbacks, too, and this is going to be different, maybe even controversial. I I do, you know, a speaker correct or room correction with the external renderer. So in the external renderer, you could set your delays for all your speakers and your room corrections. So like I'll measure with Sonarworks and Sonarworks will export this little text file and you can, you know, get in there and man, here, I'll show you, right? So here's the, here's the external renderer setup, uh, speaker calibration. So you can see my, you know, my calibrations for each speaker. And then you can also see the delays, right? I don't know if that's accurate, to be honest with you. I might've changed it since. Duh, 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 duh. Oh, no, I'm sorry. These are the gains. That's correct. Yeah, so this is correct. So these are the EQ curves that I have on the speakers. And the delays are also available bit, 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 under, I think that's room setup. Yeah, speaker delay. So, you know, all your speakers aren't equidistant from your listening spot. So you kind of need this. This is something that's not available in the internal renderer. There is a solution because Sonoworks will load as a multi-channel plugin right in the DAW. And if you have a room correction for your 714 room or whatever it may be, you'll be able to go ahead and load it right here. And that should cover it. Um, but with that being said, you know, for me, it's just not quite ready yet. I think this is a great thing. Like I'm happy to see it um, because it's going to get a lot of people going on it. But if you're already, already working on the external render, yeah, maybe, maybe the next go around. All right. Later.